you very much for allowing us to be here. Uh, following the dancers is a great thrill. Everybody's invigorated. <laughs> Lunch was excellent. But I think that probably a good opportunity for everybody to get the circulation going. Don't come up here and dance. You might fall and make a fool of yourself. <laughs> but I want everybody to look to the right and hold your right hand up in the air. Point it high. And you may want to have your index finger out also. And to get the circulation going, I want everybody to just very carefully, without hitting the person next to you, just move your hand forward a little bit. And then bring it back. And move it forward and bring it back. And you want to exhale and inhale. I don't do that. And now what I need you to do is something that actually kept me in business with CBS for a couple of years called Shame on You. So what I'm gonna do is on the count of three, everybody's gotta have your shame finger up high, and on the count of three, say shame on you. So one, two, three, shame on you. Okay, you got started, that was a good beginning, but think of it this way. For those people that want to pollute the water in Florida, this is your chance on the count of three to say, shame on you. So one, two, three, shame on you. For those people that want to put agricultural runoff from their fields into local lakes and streams, to support the growth of algae and choke off wildlife. If you ever wanted to say, shame on you, this is your chance. So this is for those people that want to basically keep pumping agricultural chemicals into our water supply. So on the count of three, one, two, th three, shame on you. Okay, so now we're, we're, we're building, we're building, you're doing good and I've got a limited amount of time. So I want to get going also. This is the, is it the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service? Yes. And we are blessed to have Everglades National Park in our backyard. And for 40 years, I've been going down there, like all of you, I'm sure, taking pictures of the birds, the plants, the alligators, the incredible, biodiversity that is Everglades National Park. So I was really, really interested this year when the Department of Interior and the Postal Service was looking at the image that they felt captured Everglades National Park for the 100th anniversary of the Park Service. And who can tell me who took the picture and what's it a picture of? Speak up, don't be shy. Who knows, go ahead, Valerie. Pine Rocklands. Pine Rocklands, and who took the picture? Paul Marcellini. The image, if you haven't seen it, is stunning. And for all the biodiversity and unbelievable habitat that there is, like nowhere else in the world, Everglades National Park stamp was the pine rocklands. It wasn't the sawgrass, it wasn't the alligator, it wasn't the flashy flamingos, it wasn't the, the ibis and all the other incredible varied habitat. It was the pine rocklands of Long Pine Key, I believe. And personally, I was thrilled because the pine rocklands of South Florida are unique, just like the Everglades. They're only found in South Florida and some Caribbean islands. America's pine rocklands are in our backyard. And like every other green space in South Florida, they are under attack. And we are now trying to publicize and marshal support to basically preserve, protect, restore 
the last 2% of the pine rocklands of America that remain in our backyard. And I want to go to our, you know, here we have our presentation and, you know, what are the pine rocklands? Well, basically, they are the Oolitic Limestone base that South Florida was based on and the native South Florida Dade County Pines for the most part. And the Rocklands used to spread roughly from the Florida Keys, Everglades National Park, up to North Miami. And they are high grounds and dry grounds and they are more biologically diverse than coral reefs, believe it or not. They are home to more than a dozen federally listed and proposed critically endangered plants and animals, some of which are only found in the Pine Rocklands and nowhere else in the world. Now, these pictures were posted by a friend of mine on Facebook, and I think that they will answer a very interesting question because this was reportedly taken at Kendall Indian Hammock Park, which is right off of Kendall Drive, and roughly 107th Avenue. And you can see that for a period, the Pine Rocklands of Kendall and South Dade were homes for our native tribes. And those could well have been ancestors for our local Miccosukee tribe and Seminole tribe. So those were, were, were very important areas that remain. The Miami Pine Rockland Coalition has been involved for about two years now, trying to oppose a billion dollars in proposed development in the Richmond Pine Rocklands, which used to be home to the old Richmond Naval Air Station. And it used to be a plantation for pine trees and kunti, and it was an agricultural area. And it is extremely diverse. One of our missions includes trying to advocate for the preservation, obviously, but also to try to educate kids, their parents, and anybody else we can engage on the more than a dozen critically endangered and either listed or soon to be listed endangered species that are found in the Pine Rocklands of South Dade. And we've held a number of different rallies. We've held a number of different cleanup events. We've gotten hundreds of people initially interested in supporting us, and for the past two years, the developers have been working very quietly behind the scenes with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to try to develop these, these areas. Now, if you look at that picture on the top on the left, I believe that's from the 1940s of the old Richmond Pine Rocklands, and that was basically all pine land. Uh, it was slowly turned into a couple of different federal facilities and Dade County facilities. Uh, the middle, middle one shows, uh, I think that was from about the 1950s, 1960s, and the one on the end uh, showed, you know, what's there today. So over the past 40 to 50 years, the encroachment of development and civilization on our local pine rocklands have reduced them to roughly 98%. Some ecologists and researchers locally say it may be closer to 99%. And the largest remaining pine rockland habitat outside of Everglades National Park is the Richmond Pine Rocklands, where Zoo Miami is, and as I've said, the big chunk of land, which turns out to be the largest privately owned Pine Rocklands down here, and literally the largest Pine Rocklands owned privately in the country, is now approved for a Walmart, for a 900 unit apartment complex, for a strip mall, for a whole bunch of other basically urban development projects, and it was all done, I live there, I can say this, with virtually no input from the public by one of 
Dade County's largest law firms, and it could not have happened without the University of Miami making a money decision that it wanted to sell the land for some 20, 22 million dollars that it got for free for research and education from the federal government. And remember that I said, in my opinion as a resident, it was all done very quietly. Well, it turns out that even the Fish and Wildlife Service down here did not even know about it and they were surprised by it. So this is something that we are fighting. We need your help. Thank you very much. No more dancing for me. <laughs> Thank you very much to Al Sunshine of the Miami Pine Rock Men's Coalition.